Hey, what's up guys, John here. Something really big is happening in the housing market that nobody is talking about. You know, I made most of my money in real estate and I love real estate investing. I wanna be very clear about that. I love real estate investing. I think it's an incredible, incredible vehicle to create tremendous wealth for yourself. And I think it's a really good way in which you can supply value to your community. You know, property tax revenue funds school districts, street services, police departments. I mean, it does a lot of good. So when you buy a property and you fix it up, you're not the only one that benefits. The entire community generally benefits. But there's a whole new conversation that's being had right now that's going against the landlord. And I'm predicting that there's going to be strict regulation coming forward to the likes in which we've never seen before in U.S. history. I'm going to break it down for you so you can see things as I see things and make smart and informed decisions based on your next investment. Please hit the like button. When you hit the like button, YouTube's going to share this content to educate more people about what's really happening in the housing market. And today's video is sponsored by GreatCreditFast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. If you'd like to fix your credit to position yourself for the greatest investing opportunity in U.S. history, we'd love to help you at greatcreditfast.com. Now, take a look at this. The Biden administration grants $520 million to stop evictions. Now, they put out this Renter's Bill of Rights, this blueprint for Renter's Bill of Rights. And inside of this blueprint, they list things such as they want the tenant to have the right to organize. So think about that. If you own a fourplex, your tenants could go on strike together and organize and they would then be able to get access to free legal networks so they would be able to get a, an attorney that's appointed to them from the government to pursue the landlord right that's that's shocking that's concerning and i think investors need to know about that also they want to prevent evictions diversions and relief so if a tenant can't pay rent they want to extend the timeline in which you would not be able to evict these tenants it's a pretty uh, concerning, concerning uh, conversation that's now being had that wasn't anything that anyone would have considered three years ago, four years ago. If we look at what Jerome Powell is saying, they're saying 70 percent, 70 percent of inflation right now is due to landlords. I mean, when they say they want to tackle inflation to me. I mean, we need to pay attention to this because as we're looking at this, we see this conversation that's being had right now. Biden's broad plan to help renters comes at the expense of mom and pop landlords. Here's what to do if you still want to own your piece of the real estate pie. Now, California, they still have an eviction moratorium in place in Oakland, San Francisco and Berkeley. This article came out for context yesterday, right? So three and a half years later, rent's still optional. Now, this poor old lady, 69-year-old lady, retiree, uh, she still paid her property taxes, insurance, and other bills on the house, uh, but she still has a tenant that is $60,000 in back rent and she can't evict them, right? $60,000 in back rent. Look at this conversation that they're having with us right now about which sets a bold goal to reduce homelessness 25% in the next year and a half, right? And this is Chicago, Dallas, LA, Phoenix, Metro, Seattle, and state of California. So, what I'm seeing is that if they want to reduce homelessness, how can they do that? One way is what they would have a renter's bill of rights, right? They'd have a new guideline, new standard, which landlords would have to operate in for them to be able to evict tenants, which would then keep people housed, right? And so if they keep people housed, they're going to be reducing homelessness. This all kind of connects like this. And so when they're moving in this direction, and when they say mom and pop, the reason they say mom and pop it's because I think people don't underestimate, they underestimate how many, how many properties are actually owned by mom and pop investors. I mean, the number is 20 million of the 50 million rental units in the U.S. are owned by mom and pops. Now, mom and pop landlords, you're thinking of a small business owner. Maybe someone inherited a duplex or maybe someone worked hard and they saved up a three and a half percent down FHA. They worked for four or five years, saved up this money. They bought a duplex or triplex. Then they have a little bit of money and they went and bought a house. Now they just have this little rental unit. Now, a lot of these landlords, they're not there to price gouge. They don't want to get top, top, top dollar. What they want to get is a tenant that's going to take care of the property, that's going to pay rent on time. That's not going to be a hassle. That's what they're looking for. Now, when you're looking at these figures, that's most of American uh, mom and pop landlords, right? But there's also in a whole nother group of landlords in which mom and pops are getting uh, mixed with, which are going to be the institutional investors and the large scale investors that are buying up tons of housing stock and increasing rents to a level in which you know many people would deem unaffordable. Now, unfortunately, these mom and pops are getting pushed into this, and now we're seeing this dialogue that's unfolding with 
uh, all these new situations that are unfolding with the eviction protections, these eviction moratoriums, and that rents are unaffordable because of all landlords. Now, with evictions fueling homelessness, Fairfax County explores options to stop them. Program that helps Chicagoans avoid evictions in limbo dries up as funding dries up. San Jose wants to help renters fight evictions. This came out two days ago. Uh, New Mexico Eviction Protections Office shutting down its federal eviction, a federal emergency rental assistance ends and eviction numbers climb up. Now, when you're looking at that 70% figure and then you look at this, it's all very, very clear. It says the federal government, through a vic- through executive orders from Biden, would become directly involved in numerous facets of property leasing, including limiting rent increases and regulating ways property owners can deal with their tenants who are in rears on their rent or damage their property. Now, when I say that I believe that the next couple years, the war is really going to be on landlords, I really do mean that. Uh, I mean that because what I think is very likely going to happen is they are going to start to push forward this renter's bill of rights. Now, we see the conversation that's been had over the last couple of years, people raising money, people investing. The conversation was that the number one enemy was inflation. You wanted to borrow money at 3%. You wanted to invest and you wanted to buy property. And over time, you know, cash will come in and you'll be able to pay off these properties and you're going to create tremendous wealth for yourself. And that was always true in the past for the most part. But now we're going to start to see who really has the flexibility to be able to withstand a storm, withstand these problems that are going to be coming, because they will be coming. I believe that we're going to start to see many, many landlords leave the business because of this. And I think we're going to see a lot of landlords that are going to underwrite the risk going into the business, realizing, okay, look, I'm going to buy this property, but I'm going to buy it based on the fact that there could be a chance in which I have three months, six months, 12 months with no renter in here. I might have a situation with legal bills. I might have a situation with uh, a rent cap that could potentially come or a vacancy controls. I could have these situations that come forward. And because of that, I need to underwrite this deal really, really skillfully. I need to be really strategic about how much I'm paying for it and what my strategy is going to be. That's what I think is going to happen. I think we're going to see a lot of investors approaching it from that angle going forward because when we see these rules get rewritten and people have these razor thin margins on these deals and the cost of debt went from 3% to 7% and many people can't you know get loans out against their properties because they don't have equity you're gonna see people just walking away you're gonna see people giving back the keys and I've been talking about this for a little while saying I think the biggest investing opportunity is we're gonna see a lot of renters start to turn to mom-and-pop landlords because there's so many small businesses that have been devastated the last couple of years. What are these property owners going to do, right? When things get harder and the cost of living gets worse, they're going to start selling. They're going to start selling off these duplexes and triplexes and fourplexes. That's what they're going to do. So if you're a renter right now and you're like, hey, I want to invest in real estate, great. Save up, save up as much money as you can. Get your credit in line. Position yourself and study what's going on with the White House and what all, all these new restrictions and protections and all these things that are going to happen so you can take in all the information and make a smart, well-informed decision based on the reality, based on the facts of what's going on. Because when you see this, I mean, the right to organize, the, like, this is really incredible. It's really incredible. Renters should be able to access resources that help them to avoid evictions, ensure legal process during the eviction proceedings is fair. Now, it's, who is the one that decides if it's fair? It would be the tenant, right? And they would be the one that have access to the council. Um, to avoid future housing instability, to prevent evictions, renters should have access to just or good cause eviction protections that require a justified cause to evict a tenant, and tenants need to receive adequate notice if their lease is not being renewed. Renters should be able to avoid an eviction filing through alternatives to the eviction system, such as eviction diversion, grievance procedures, prevent formal legal proceedings through negotiation, mediation, arbitration, resort resolutions. Uh, I mean, you start to look at this, you can see this. You can see it very clearly that changes are going to be coming. Changes are going to be coming in a very, very big way. So smart and strategic investors, they're, they're really paying close attention to it. But mark my words, Jerome Powell in the short term likely will continue to increase interest rates. This affordability crisis will likely get worse. And they're going to push a lot of the blame onto the landlords, as they already say that 70% of inflation right now is due to housing costs. What do you think? Drop below, hit the like button, subscribe here, add me on IG for short form content you won't get uh, anywhere else. And if you want to fix your credit, we would love to help you 
at greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. You can give us a call at 561-430-5900, and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video.